Let's take a look at the bigger picture. Eddie Gabor is standing by, owner, Key Advisors Wealth Management. So your thoughts, I mean, we're, we're getting into 2024, right? So now we're in March. How are you feeling? Look, I think it's very clear that this is a bull market here in the near term, and I think the momentum is going to continue. You know, you'll see corrections along the way this year, but with the amount of liquidity in the system right now and the amount of government spending that's going to continue to accelerate in this election year, I think you got a backstop there for the bulls. So dips will continue to get bought, and I do think you have to be concentrated in the right areas. Uh, but there's some great opportunity this year in our opinion. And we've been buying dips this quarter. We actually took some profits last week. Uh, we haven't bought anything yet this week. So we'll wait and see if we get any bit of a, of a dip this week or next week. But we'll be patient in getting back in on the profits that we took uh, last week from our India position. All right. So buy the dips, sell the rips. Uh, certainly seems like what you've been doing a little bit at this point, you know, you talk about liquidity and the government spending election year, um, you know, also the Fed, right, likely to cut rates. Do you think that will also be a boost to the market? It will. You know, look, here's the one thing that I tell investors is rate cuts, and this is going to sound counterintuitive, generally are not bullish for equities. They're bullish in the very beginning of the rate cutting cycle. Uh, so I would tell people to be careful what you wish for. I'm hoping that the Fed it delays their tightening until we get to uh, June in regards to cutting rates. Uh, so that would be loosening, not tightening, because I think the longer they wait, that means that the economy can hold up without those rate cuts. Uh, if we start getting rate cuts sooner, that to me is going to be a sign that things are deteriorating faster. So higher for longer, in our opinion, is actually bullish this year versus having to get so many cuts. Because remember, we only get a lot of cuts when there are big problems in liquidity as well as the economy. So we're expecting a cut right. in June to July, but I don't think we're going to get more than two, maybe three at best this year. Right. So the no cut would almost mean a soft landing and things are fine and we're, we're still growing, but uh, don't want to have them manipulate or change what's going on. What do you think about the CPI report today? Look, I think what it shows is as loud and clear as we've shared with clients is that last mile of inflation is going to be really tough to get down anywhere near that 2%. And this is why the Fed, in our opinion, would be foolish to cut too early, because the biggest fear that the Fed has is a reacceleration of inflation, where they would have to start tightening again. So they're better off being a little bit late and cautious. Uh, because, look, we're not even close to 2% on core. So inflation is going to stay sticky. And as long as the government continues to pump money into the system at the rate that they are, that's inflationary as well, too. So it's counterintuitive what the Fed is doing, but that's the deck of cards that we have at hand. And you can play it to your advantage knowing uh, what they're doing. So tell me about some of the investments you do like. Energy, is that something you're following closely? You like energy? We do. We have a we have approximately a three percent position in energy right now in our tactical strategy uh, that has shown some strength here recently. And if the economy stays resilient and inflation stays sticky, that's an area as well as dollar getting weak that we will look to increase that. Uh, the other area we've been buying on dips are small caps. We got some good entry points there in January. I believe small caps have the potential to outperform the S and P because it's been very underinvested in the last two years and has a lot of way to go, in our opinion, to get back to the 2021 highs. Uh, and of course, internationally, we have our exposure to India, and we still have our core holdings in tech and the broader market of some larger cap names, but we wanna concentrate in some of these areas that haven't had the participation in the last two years, because we think that's where you can generate a tremendous amount of alpha for investors. But you've gotta be nimble in this market. This is why we're taking advantage of big moves and taking some off the top and getting back in those same areas that we're bullish on at hopefully lower prices. Right, understood. I mean, the small caps, there would be some people who would push back on that and say, why bother with the small caps? They could be so volatile. They're such a hard group. They really have not been outperformers over the last decade even. Um, you know, make the case for small caps. So uh, part of what you just said is the case for it because it's not a very loved area right now and it's very underinvested. Um, and when you take a look at what, in our opinion, needs to happen for this market to stay 
and a bullish trend for the next six months, which we think it will, you're going to need to see a broadening out. And one area that hasn't participated, because everyone's been so focused on AI and technology, and rightfully so, is small caps. So I believe that once they start catching a bid, and you're seeing some strength there, uh, make no mistake about it, in our opinion, uh, but once you get a bid there and you start to see money flows go into that area, you could really see that move very quickly. Uh, so again, uh, but you just have to be careful with how much of a weighting you put in there. Uh, we're going to not have the same weighting in small caps as we would large caps. And you said uh, we believe the market stays strong through the summer. All bets are off post-election. Um, you know, I'm not voting one way or the other, right? But if the ticket were Biden-Trump, um, just the markets, how do you think the markets could react, you know, in the fourth quarter, you know, if you have, uh, depending on who wins? You know, I think it's more of a function of having to deal with the deficit issues and the consumer debt that we're going to have to deal with post-election, regardless of who wins. Uh, when you have an incumbent running for re-election, the government's not going to do anything to kind of disrupt the apple cart, which is why they're going to continue to print money. But at some point in time, government spending has to get cut or we're heading down a path that no one wants to see what that result will look like. And so I believe 2025 sets up for we're going to have to make some tough decisions and that will impact government spending moving forward, which will be a headwind for the economy potentially and the markets. So it's more of a function of that versus who's going to win. And on top of that are the tax cuts that are set to expire in 2025. Um, if they go back to what they were, to me, that could be a very negative thing from the equity markets as well, too. So uh, there's a lot that's going to transpire post-election, more of a function of liquidity as well as the debt versus who actually wins. All right. Thank you for all that. It's great to see you and hear your bullish uh, outlook. Eddie Gabor, owner, Key Advisors Wealth Management. Thank you, Eddie.